The next question I want to ask is logic, the basic laws of logic, the law of non-contradiction, A is not B in the same context. I want to ask you, is the law of non-contradiction something that we've invented or is it something that is objective outside ourselves? If you say that it's something that we've invented, then how can you object to Christianity because there is no objective standard to judge it with if it's just a psychological, if logic is a psychological construction, the basic laws that is. There is a difference between the basic laws and other types of logic. If you say that logic is outside of us, then how can logic be outside of us? How can there be rationale outside of our own rationale? Unless that rationale is personal, and if it's personal, then to what being is the personal referring to? <coughs> so in other words, if the logic is outside of ourselves, is it contingent with our nature or independent of nature? Is it, if it's contingent on nature, then it's not outside of nature. It's still a logical construction, uh, a psychological construction of ourselves, and therefore we're in the subjective uh, situation. If logic is not contingent with on na within nature, but independent of nature, but referring to nature, then as the question is, at what point is this logic sustaining itself? In other words, if it's independent of nature, but referring to nature, how does this logic sustain itself? How can an idea sustain itself unless there be a mind? How can logic sustain itself unless there be a mind? So it's, the logic is pointing to an eternal God because logic at every point of the universe, the law of non-contradiction has to be used. If you use um, quantum physics, there are different quantum physics uh, schools but also you have to use the law of non-contradiction in order to argue that the law of non-contradiction does not apply to quantum physics so you don't actually win the argument and in the equations of quantum physics you still have to use the law of non-contradiction is logic the basic law of psychological construction or is it something outside of nature. What do you think? The next question is, did Jesus Christ die on a cross and rise again? I believe that he did die on a cross, that he did rise again, and I believe he died for your sin because he loved you and he gave his life for you, and that he wants you to know him as your Lord and Savior. But here's the question, what evidence have you got that Jesus didn't die on a cross and that he didn't rise again? Uh, if you say that, well, just miracles don't happen, then science doesn't say that miracles don't happen. Science takes a neutral position. If you say, well, he didn't rise again from a historical point of view, then what criteria do you have in investigating the historical data of the Gospels? If you say, well, eyewitness material is not a good way of knowing anything, well, you need to unpack that, give us some evidence for it. Um, it that's the case. The point is that when we come to know history, we have various methods that we inquire and are able to uh, assess historical data. When we assess the historical data, it is a historical fact that Christ died on a cross because there are so many lines of evidence pointed to that. And it's this historical fact that the disciples believe that Jesus rose again. I'm not saying that proves that he rose again, but what I'm saying is it is a fact in history that the early church believed that Jesus rose again. Now these two facts that can be proved historically, when we begin to look at the hypotheses, did Jesus rise again? Our hypothesis fits those facts better than your hypothesis. So what is your hypothesis and what are your facts? Please let us know. The next question that I want to ask uh, student ADs out there is, why aren't you a nihilist? On the one hand, you want objective evidence from those who are theists. Uh, and yet, you know that there is no objective evidence for a meaning to life. So you give yourself a private meaning to life. So you're contradicting yourself. You demand objective evidence for the Christian, but you don't have objective evidence for the meaning of life. So you're not being logically consistent. If you were logically consistent, you would be a nihilist. And if you're a nihilist, if there is no meaning to life, then, objectively speaking, you should commit suicide. That's what Austrian, some Austrian intellectuals did at the turn of the century. 
Now I don't want you to commit suicide. Don't commit suicide. You don't have to commit suicide. The meaning to life is Jesus Christ, objectively speaking, died and rose again. And you can have a meaning by trusting in Jesus and believing in Jesus. Because there is evidence that he died and rose again. But your position is nihilism. And nihilism should lead to suicide. But you're not committing suicide and you've not gone over to nihilism because you're not being logically consistent with your position. You want objective evidence for the universe that, that there is a God, yet you don't provide any objective evidence that there is a meaning to your life. So I want to repeat again, nobody has to commit suicide, do not commit suicide. There is a God, he died on the cross for you, he rose again. In Jesus Christ you can believe in him and you can find peace and rest for your soul. There is a meaning to life. But the atheist is not being logically consistent to their position if they are not a nihilist. Thank you for listening. Uh, I want to ask is who sets the boundaries? If there is no God then how do we differentiate what's right and wrong? You know, if we have marriage, we could have five people marry, ten people marry. Where does the boundary come? How do we create a boundary of what's right and wrong? If we say it's society, then society changes, so our boundaries will change. Uh, so, the question is, how do you get right and wrong? Uh, how do we get boundaries in an atheistic system? Uh, to me, it ultimately, it's moral relativism, if you follow atheism. The next question I want to ask is, will you become a Christian? In John 3.16 it says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Christ died on that cross because he loved you, and he wants you to come into a relationship with him by confessing your sin and believing on him. If you do that, you will know peace and joy, and you'll know a God who is with you. There is a heaven and a hell according to the Bible, and you can find peace if you believe in Jesus Christ. Now here's a question, and answer it honestly. If I provided all the evidence that you needed that there is a God and that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, would you believe? If you say no, it shows that all these questions that you've been answering, ultimately you've not been intellectually honest. And if you say yes, then get in touch with me, and I'll do my best to provide some evidences to you if you need them. So may God bless you and I hope that you come to know the Lord as your Saviour. God bless.